Thank you. So the world is drastically changing. It's changing rapidly. And one of the largest forces behind this transformation is what we all call artificial intelligence. I spent the last couple of years of my life creating and bringing artificial intelligence products to market. And what I discovered completely changed my view, my perspective of what was the future of this technology. Starting with a little secret. Artificial intelligence is anything but intelligent. Interesting, right? In fact, it's quite dumb. It's only good at solving very small, very specific problems. For anything else, it fails. And this idea that this big, powerful machine that can do it all, it's sadly far from the truth. And I know, that's not what we all hear in the media, that's not what we all hear in the press. But that shouldn't really surprise you, because, sorry, that shouldn't really surprise you, because not a single week goes by without we hearing about this new scandalous article about how AI is going to kill all of us, about how it's going to slave us, about how it's going to overpower us and take all our jobs, because it's going to be both better at creative and physical tasks. And sadly, as exciting as those things are, they're not the truth. Because they're either A, too far in the future for us to know for certain, or B, just complete science fiction. So if the future of artificial intelligence is not this big, powerful, know-it-all machine that can do everything, what is it? That's what I want to talk about today. So, sorry. But before I can actually address the future, I need to go back in time. A couple of years ago, I was invited to meet probably one of the greatest senior managers at the largest technology company in Asia. It was a telecom, and they were doing brilliantly that year, I remember. And as a new startup founder, I said, this is it, this is my chance. If I can convince them to buy my technology, we have done it as a company. I was super excited, I was thrilled. I still remember getting into the office, sitting in the small chair across his desk. I took a deep breath and prepared to give the pitch of my life. But before I could even get started, he interrupted me. He said, oh, thanks for coming. So do you sell some of that AI? Some of that AI. I was, I was puzzled. I said, well, maybe this guy is testing me. Maybe he just want to know what I know about AI. So I answered, yes, we do have this artificial intelligence product that uses natural language processing to understand human language. And we can help you with sales and support, etc." And this guy was excited. He, he, I never saw, never saw someone so happy. He said, fantastic, because my boss wants me to increase profitability by 20%. I only have three months, and I need some of that AI that everyone's talking about to do it. <laughs> some of that AI everyone's talking about to do it. So at that point, I knew that this poor guy had no idea what we were discussing. And it wasn't his fault. Because for one side, his manager was pushing him to do something probably impossible. And the media spent the last 10, 20 years convincing him that AI is a magic box that you can just connect to anything, and it will just work. It wasn't the case. And I was tempted. I said, maybe I could do a quick sale. And I wanted to say, sure, I have some of that magic AI you're looking for. In fact, we have a special promotion. Buy one AI, get one AI free. I didn't, though, because I just didn't think he would find it funny. Um, so, but I did learn something. Well, we didn't get a client. We, disappointingly, we didn't land a new client that day. But I did learn a very valuable lesson. One, well, two valuable lessons. One, that we know very little about what artificial intelligence is. And two, yet we all want it badly. So let's try to answer that question. What is artificial intelligence? And funny enough, there is no strict definition. If I tell you that something uses artificial intelligence, I might be referring to the most powerful machine ever created, or I might be referring to a simple calculator, because we haven't drawn the line. Where is it? What's intelligent and what's not? And this one thing we do have agree on, 
which is we call the term artificial intelligence to refer to this umbrella of different softwares and techniques that we use. Things like machine learning or artificial neural networks, expert system, computer vision, natural language processing. And I know they sound like rocket science, but they're not that, believe me. What they really are is just a set of programs or techniques that we use to have the computer learn something new. As simple as that. In my opinion, artificial intelligence is just softwares, techniques that we use to get the computer to learn or do something new. Not that complicated, right? Now, some of those might be very primitive and rely on brute force, and some others are rather innovative, and they're helping us to shape the future of the world. And one that I personally like a lot, my personal favorite, is natural language processing. And the reason I like natural language processing so much is because what it does is help us understand human language. And there's something so powerful about the way we communicate with each other, about the way languages evolve over time, about the way that ge different geographies have different languages, and the fact that a computer can understand what we are saying, not just by looking at keywords, but to actually understanding the intention of a sentence is something that even after years of working on it, I still find completely perplexing. And the reason I find this so exciting, I think, is for this new thing we call the third interface. And the story goes like this. Have you guys seen something like this? Yeah, a couple of you? So we call the terminal interface. And if you're anything like me, you spend hours in front of that frustrated because you have no idea what you're doing. Now, don't get me wrong. The terminal is absolutely fantastic because if you know how to use it, you can talk to a computer, you can order a computer to do something, and it does it. It's the closest to superpower we have. But yet, it has a problem, though. It's hard to use, very hard to use. People using it for the last 20 years will still be like, what, can, what am I doing right now? And as good as it might be, we decided to create a new one, something we call the graphical interface. Any of you used something like this before? There we go. We use it every day, probably. It's what we use on our phones. It's what we use on smartphones. It's what we use on the tablets. It's what we use on the computers. And this interface is easy. It's so easy to use. And we created it because, funny enough, the world really wanted technology, but it was not willing to learn how to use it. And it's so easy, and I'm not exaggerating, that a child can use it. Just give a 25-year-old, and he or she will figure out how to open an app, how to close an app, how to send a message. We'll figure out how to order 1,000 toys from Amazon, if you let him. <laughs> but this one also came in a trade-off. We lost full flexibility. We have no control on what we can do. And the only thing we can achieve something is by downloading software or apps which are prefabricated functions. You don't get to tell your music app what to do. You don't get to tell your taxi app what to do. Programmers have built up beforehand, and if you want a new feature, well, too bad. Wait for the next update. So there you go. Full flexibility, and then what? Ease of use, close to no flexibility until now. Artificial intelligence, specifically NLP, is enabling the third interface, a conversational interface, in which we use human language, English, Spanish, written form, a voice, to understand, to let the computer understand what we want, and it carries it out. You want to drive home? No worries. Just tell Siri, tell your Google Assistant, hey, please bring me a taxi, and it does it. And the reason I find this so exciting and I personally believe it's a, it's a game-changing time in history. It's because of, for the very first time, we're moving from a time when we had to learn how to interact with computers to now computers having to learn how to interact with us. And that's not only extraordinary. Once we cross the line, it's not coming back. Another thing I learned throughout my journey is that artificial intelligence is very accessible. Super accessible, in fact is no longer guarded by the largest tech companies. No, it's no longer behind these iron walls that we cannot see or access. 
there's been a lot of very successful programs to democratize the technology, to make it available for anyone on the internet. And they worked. That is the reason why a young entrepreneur from El Salvador has the same access to the largest and most advanced pool of software than the largest corporation worldwide. Very, very exciting time to be working in technology. And this force is enabling a new type of economy, something I like to call the plus AI economy. It's looking up solutions for the current problems and saying, wait a second, I can do it more effectively, more efficiently using artificial intelligence. Traffic jam is a problem? No worries, self-driving cars are coming. Car plus AI. What about you don't like waiting long lines at the store? We have cashiers with, with visual recognition, self-checkouts. Calorie, you, you want to lose weight? Well, calorie tracking plus AI. All those things are coming and are making its way to every single aspect of our lives, from healthcare to sports to retail, even toothbrushes. And I'm not kidding. You can today buy a toothbrush with artificial intelligence. I don't know why on earth would anyone want it, but they're very expensive and you can buy it today. And uh, I think we need to some point start thinking, where do we put the line of where we need AI and where we don't? Um, but that's a story for another time. Back to the future of artificial intelligence. It's probably the most exciting time we have ever had to be working in technology because the world is dividing in two types of companies. The ones building the bigger, stronger AI and making it accessible to everyone. And the second type, which is just grabbing it and applying it, is those are the ones that look at the world's most pressing global problems and saying, wait a second, we can fix this just by adding an AI element. And it's my opinion that this, this second type of company, the one applying artificial intelligence, that will make the greatest change in the years to come. And while the last 50 years of humankind were all dedicated to creating the theoretical frameworks of artificial intelligence, it's the next 50 years in which we should grab those frameworks and apply it to real life problems. And because it's accessible, we can all do it. In fact, there are students, there are entrepreneurs, there are practitioners working on solving those problems today. Innovators, just like you and me, that grab this technology and take it farther, to grab the technology and apply it far and wide. And we can all be part of this revolution. Now, I believe that's an idea worth sharing. Thank you very much.